Good morning. Um, I've got a pair of Snell J2s that have come in from a lovely guy called Glenn. Um, they basically aren't sounding particularly good and they need a bit of work. Um, he's lived with them for quite a while and I think he was fairly happy with the sound um, but went to do an upgrade, um, just your standard crossover capacitor upgrade that people do, just take out the electrolytics and put poly caps in there. Um, but when he did that, he found that they'd been mucked around with quite a bit um, because these come with, or originally come with, uh, quite a complex crossover. Um, looking at pictures and schematics, quite a messy crossover. Um, and also, the tweeters on these have been replaced. Um, I haven't looked behind this yet. I think that's a C's tweeter. I'm fairly familiar with that. I've seen it on a lot of Rogers speakers. Uh, a 418 maybe, but we'll have a look. And that's not original. Um, the woofer is. This is um, a treated paper cone woofer. I think this foam surround is new. It looks like it's been replaced. Um, but the strange thing is, whoever replaced the tweeter decided in their infinite wisdom to strip out the existing crossover, junk it all, and simply put a three microfarad capacitor on the tweeter. So what they're allowing to happen is this woofer to play from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, completely uncontrolled, to do what it wants. And the poor little tweeter is restricted to, uh, with a three microfarad cap, probably five and a half thousand hertz upwards. Um, and it's awful. I have measured it. I'll show you that later. Um, and it's just terrible. The woofer plays up to 4,000 hertz. And then as it begins to blend with the tweeter, they're completely out of phase. The woofer's trying to create frequencies or reproduce frequencies that it just can't do. And there's phasing issues, there's dropout issues. Really from about 5,000 hertz, the um, sound pressure level just drops off um, and it's awful. This woofer has got quite a bit of moving mass and it cannot create or reproduce high frequencies accurately. It's trying to move in and out, producing those deep bass notes, but at the same time, kind of shudder really fast to produce the high frequencies. And if you think that your big woofer moves in and out quite a bit, but it's still trying to create these short waveforms, the phasing is completely off. It will never marry up to a tweeter. So you get this Doppler effect where the woofer is moving forwards and backwards quite a reasonable distance, let's say a centimetre, um, to create those low frequency notes. But it's creating teeny tiny movements for the high frequencies, which are really short waveforms or wavelengths. So that sound source, in effect, for the high frequencies, is moving nearer and farer from you all the time. So it's this Doppler effect. And the phasing issues will be terrible. Um, so there is huge suck out from around 5,000 hertz between these two. So we have to build a, a proper network for this, um, which involves a lot of measuring, um, a lot of testing. I have bucket loads of caps, loads of inductors, loads of resistors, and we just have to measure, piece together a network um, and see what we can do. We need to control this woofer. Um, we don't want it playing, looking at how I measured it, really above 3000 hertz. That's when it starts to break up and go all crazy because it's just not designed and, and physically can't produce high frequency. Um, and the tweeter, we need to carry on from the woofer, probably 3000 hertz upwards. but. This tweeter, sorry, is um, not the original and it's quite small. I think the original was probably bigger and I might struggle to get the tweeter low enough to meet the woofer. And I really don't want the woofer playing up 
too hot. So it's going to be um, interesting. They are bi-wireable, bi um, so separate connections for the woofer and tweeter. <clears throat> I, I just don't understand that. <clears throat> I know people want to use their maybe different speaker cables for the high frequency and one for the low frequency. There's no point in amping a tweeter separately, um, but obviously we're going to keep this arrangement. Um, and I believe the internals in terms of the cabinet filling has been mucked around with as well. So we'll take it apart, see what we find. Right, so a bit of a look inside. Here's our woofer. <clears throat> as you can see, it's paper cone. Someone's stuck on some sound deadening to, I presume, try and remove the ringing from the um, chassis. Uh, yeah, quite a lightweight woofer, pretty basic magnet, um, yeah, so we'll take that off, disconnect it and, and have a look, but in reasonable condition, loads of silicon around it, where they've tried to seal it into the box, um, yeah, bit of a mess really. Right, so the cabinet is full of... It looks like rock wool, but it's not. It's really, really soft. I think people call this um, angel hair. But it's fly away, horrible stuff. And this is a, a ported cabinet. There's a base port at the back. And I really wouldn't want that flying around in the air. I should put a mask on, really. But yeah, um, not great. Right, so we'll go a bit wobbly cam at the moment. So I've taken out all the angel hair. Look at it. Ugh. Someone has put um, some foam in there. It's sort of like an egg crate design. That probably works quite well. Um, there's an additional brace that's been glued in there. That certainly is an original, which will tighten up the front baffle, stop it flexing. Um, and you can see where the original crossover was in there and our binding posts. So the woofer, there we are, just straight connected. And our poor little tweeter just has this capacitor on there. 3.3 um, microfarad. How many times have you seen that standard value on car tweeters, things like that? Um, yeah, so we're gonna get rid of that, join it through, so we can use the binding posts just to connect directly to the speakers and um, try and build a network for it. So here's a close-up of the capacitor I've just taken out. 3.3 microfarad, 5% tolerance. It's probably quite a good cap. Um, 630 volt. <laughs> like it's ever going to see that. Um, there's this thing called ESR, um, Equivalent Series Resistance, and if you use a higher voltage cap, that resistance is lower. Um, but we're not talking, I don't really think it has much of an effect. Um, and you're asking this to introduce resistance at a certain frequency, that's what the capacitor does to filter out low frequency. So, yeah, anyway, let's crack on. Right, I'm just undoing the tweeter. Um, you can tell it's not original. All the screws are in at funny angles. I don't know whether you can see the screwdrivers lent back there. I'm trying to undo this where they've wedged them in there to fit. You poor speaker. Poor, poor speaker. Who does this? Yeah. Right, let's pop that out and have a look. Well, I'd love to get that out, but it's stuck in with silicon. Absolutely loads of silicon. So, unfortunately, 
but that's not coming out. Um, like I say, I'm pretty sure I'll get it. I'm pretty sure it's one of those, which is, a, I think, a C's 418. Um, yeah, looks identical. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But I'm not going to try and take that out. That's just stuck in there with silicon. Um, and I'll only damage it getting it out. So, yep, it can stay there and we can work with it like that. Right, so what I want to quickly do is get the um, DC resistance values of these drivers. So let's see what we've got, because we might need that if we need to do any calculations. So uh, on the tweeter, hopefully about six ohms. That's 6.5 ohms, so that's its nominal impedance is probably eight. And the woofer. is three and a half so it's nominal impedance is probably about four ohms so yeah that's quite handy to know because we might need that if we want to start off by doing our little calculation to get us started cool it's worth noting that i think the original tweeter was six ohm maybe four um and we might run into level issues between these two drivers as well now because when I initially measured them uh, the tweeter was playing quite quiet compared so um, the last thing you really want to do is put a resistor on the woofer to bring its volume down normally the woofer is the speaker you reference all the other drivers against not cut the woofer back with a resistor so yeah we'll see how we get on Right, so these are the original measurements I took of these Snell J2s a while ago. And the blue line is the woofer. And the red line is the tweeter with that 3.3 microfarad cap on it. And the green line, which you probably can't see very well, is the sum of the two. So how the frequency response of the speaker is. Um, so you can see the woofer um, plays fairly well up until about, I don't know, 3000 hertz. It's got a few dropouts um, where it dips quite low, 1200 hertz and about 1800 hertz. <clears throat> but you can see it sort of naturally rolls off <clears throat> at about 3000 hertz because it just can't accurately produce much higher. Um, and also it's, it's sort of all over the shop from there. Um, this waveform has been cleaned up a bit, so um, it's easier to read. Uh, the tweeter, you can see, is playing fairly low um, in comparison. Um, and the green line being the sum of the two. And you can see when we hit about 4k hertz, the massive dropout here at about 6k hertz, which is because the tweeter's playing so out of phase and also a lower volume. So, yeah, um, from 4000 hertz upwards, we've got a bit of a problem, really. And also the uh, woofer being allowed to do what what it wants is sort of a bit all over the map really I mean currently between 250 Hertz up to 3000 Hertz they're probably plus minus 4 DB which isn't particularly good um, but then after 4000 Hertz we really roll off 10 or 15 DB so yeah we'll um, have to see what we can do Right, so this is how I'm measuring these. So I've got the speakers outside on a stand, so we have no room reflections. Um, I have my calibrated microphone, which is one meter away from the speaker on tweeter axis. And I've got separate cables for the woofer and the tweeter, so we can test them individually and build the crossover. So that's on a stand there. Outside we get no room reflections. So we're truly measuring the speaker um, and nothing else. So down on the floor there, I've got um, a pair of speaker jacks and a microphone input jack. 
which both come from the both speakers come from the uh, B set on the amplifier that I use in here and the microphone goes back to my tablet right so the way I measure speakers um, is a bit different to how you'd probably expect it to be done because I haven't spent thousands of pounds on measuring equipment I use a calibrated microphone which is a Dayton Audio IMM6 and this comes with a serial number and you download the calibration file and you put it into the software on the tablet which is um, Audio Tools. Um, I'll bring you in a bit closer to that. So yeah, Audio Tools um, has this calibration file so the microphone is accurate um, I think to within a quarter of a dB um, it uses third octave calibration, so it's pretty accurate. Um, I have set this up so the lowest um, decibel level this will pick up is 70 dB. So basically that rules out all the background noise outside because um, there are birds tweeting and things like that and they're all well below 70 decibels. Um, the pink noise test tone <clears throat> I will use at about 85 decibels at 1 kilohertz and I'll use that as a kind of reference for all the other frequencies. Um, I've limited this to measure between 125 hertz up to 8 kilohertz because really outside of those bands it's difficult to control um, and I don't want to have crazy measurements that are a bit irrelevant really so um, it gives me quite a good um, system of measuring and it's pretty accurate um, I'd say overall I've got this rig probably to about half a dB um, and it works very well so here I have it's quite an old amplifier a Sansui A7 um, which under 5 watts is about half a dB between 5 hertz and 40 kilohertz accurate. Um, I can defeat all the tone controls and it gives me um, a really good level output um, to drive the speaker. Um, so that's how I power the speaker when I'm doing the testing. Um, as well as using pink noise from audio tools, I can also use my signal generator, which I will often do to sweep um, across a crossover point to see how it measures um, to make sure I've got it right so yeah it takes a little bit of doing but it um, the results are good it works out well so uh, yeah time to get cracking right so so far I'm just working on the woofer circuit at the moment um, I'm using a 0.24 millihenry inductor and I'm using two 10s in parallel to make a 20 um, and that's rolling off quite steeply at uh, 3 kilohertz which is what we want and it's giving something reasonably flat I've got a bit of a lump at the end which might be the port um, but yeah we're getting there right we're making progress um, I've got it reasonably well it's not flat at the moment but it's within 5 dB uh, and then we have a huge suck out and then we get back up to the tweeter so this is the woofer rolling off and this is the tweeter coming in so clearly I've got to probably not roll the woofer off so steep and take the tweeter um, a little shallower as well so this might only want to be a second order so yeah we're getting there everything all over the floor at the moment but um yeah it's coming together okay so now I've connected the tw tweeter out of phase and you can see <clears throat> we've lifted that up quite a bit so um, yeah I think I just need to adjust a couple of things and we should be getting there I want to remove this lump so I want to roll the woofer off earlier uh, and not so um, steeply and the same with the tweeter as well, I think. It's uh, looking quite good at the moment. Right. 
I think I'm about there. So what we've ended up with on the woofer is in, through a 0.87 and a 0.23. So really this is one milli Henry. Um, and then we've got a 15 microfarad cap. So we've made a second order um, on the woofer. And then on the tweeter, we've ended up with a eight microfarad cap and a 0.24 milli Henry inductor. So second order on the tweeter as well. And although it probably doesn't look it, there's a bit of choppiness there. We are plus minus probably about three dB. So it's pretty good. Um, so what I want to do now is crudely assemble this and listen to some music through it. Um, because ultimately that is um, what this is all about. Measurements are great, but um, what does it sound like? Um, so far, measuring pretty good. Right, so after an hour or so of mucking around, this is what we've ended up with. So we've got our positive and we've got our negative. So we have our tweeter. We have our woofer. Our tweeter has to be connected out of phase. Um, normally that's the case. Uh, I've swapped the polarity, <coughs> take measurements, <coughs> and there's a big suck out at about 4000 hertz if it's in phase. If it's out of phase, um, that lump or that dip comes right up. So kind of normal really. So I've managed to get away with a second order on the tweeter. So we come through a eight microfarad cap into the tweeter negative. And then we have an air core inductor, which is 0 0.24 milli Henry. I mean, I've used values that I've got um, I've got lots of capacitors, not so many inductors, so um, yeah, I've frigged and farted around with it. Um, and uh, yeah, this has worked out quite well. So on the woofer, we have again ended up with a, a second order. So I've got two inductors in series at the moment to make uh, a 1.1 milli Henry inductor. So into the positive. 1.1 milli Henry, like that. Woofer goes down to ground, it's playing in phase, which is what we hope for. And then we have a 10 microfarad cap down to ground. Okay, and we had, um, this is a four ohm woofer, and this is an eight ohm tweeter. And I was quite worried about that tweeter being eight ohms because it does play quieter um, and it's measuring that way. But when I listen, it sounds good. So I might have to introduce um, a resistor. In fact, looking at the original schematic for this before the tweeter um, was changed, they did have a four and a half ohm resistor on the woofer. So I wouldn't be surprised if after listening to it, I do have to do that because the woofer plays um, three or four dB louder. So that would make sense. So yeah, on the whole, I think we're about there. So I'm going to pack up this mess and then um, assemble something decent that we can uh, test. Okay. I don't know how well you can see this, but here's an original scribble apparently of the original crossover. Um, you've got a 1.42 milli Henry inductor through a 4.5 ohm resistor and a 12 microfarad cap. So we're not a million miles off of that. Um, what we've done is allow it to play up a bit higher um, because the tweeter is smaller and um, can't play down as low. And it has been tricky trying to couple these together. It really has. Um, on the original tweeter, 
they had 2.2 and an 8 in series before we got to the inductor. Um, so kind of second order, but then they had had a capacitor and a resistor down to ground. So they were kind of changing the inductor to more of a notch filter. Yeah, I mean, I've ended up with similar values, I would have said in the end, but yeah, strange. They obviously had a few issues with that tweeter controlling it, but um, yeah, not a million miles off. Well, believe it or not, all of that mucking around earlier has got us um, to this point. I've run, uh, taken all the measurements that I uh, took earlier. Um, what I do to average them out, I put them into CAD and then um, ping a reference point on all of the graph um, peaks and troughs and it kind of gives me an average line um, and I think it works really well. So I'm going to sort of trace this out because you probably can't see it very well. This green line is our frequency response of the speaker as a whole. There we go. Here we've got 85 dB and here we've got 80. So putting a ruler through that, we are kind of reasonably flat. Plus minus 2 dB, 2.5 dB. Um, and I'm really pleased with that. So just to follow the woofer, again, I'm only just scribbling this out. We sort of drop off here and then the tweeter we kind of come along like this so our crossover point is here which is about two and a half thousand two and two point eight kilohertz something like that we were aiming for around three so that's really good and you can see while the woofer rolls off and the tweeter comes up the sum of the two um, give us this reasonably flat line so that's worked out really well um, I print this graph up to go with the speakers and uh, yeah these have worked out really really well so yeah I hope that's uh, been quite interesting odd way of doing it like I say I don't spend thousands of pounds on measuring equipment like Clio or um, something like that um, I used to use Roo with a DBX microphone, um, but my God, it was a faff. Um, this system, whilst it's a bit Heath Robinson, kind of allows me to do things on the fly and quite quickly, and it's it's accurate enough for what I do. You know, most of my work is just component replacing and repairing speakers, getting them up and running again, not designing new. So doing a network like this almost from scratch is... Um, not something I do all the time, but uh, yeah, it's good to do. Bit of a long-winded process, um, but in the end, the results have been good. So uh, in the next video, we will put the crossover together because I've ordered a couple of new parts, um, build the crossover board, put it in the speaker, and um, yeah, give them one final measure up. Um, I've crudely assembled the crossovers with the parts that I've got and had a listen to them. I've got to say, they sound pretty damn good. So I think we're about there. Okay, next video will be like a final assembly, um, crossover build, and uh, yeah, hope that'll be interesting too. Okay, cheers.